Hello guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Turf Wars and Guilds, or Guilds and Turf Wars. The first thing you should do is, when you have the possibility, is to join a guild. Now, do not worry, you don't have to make any friends, if you don't like to communicate with other players, that is quite alright, uh, no one requires you to talk. The only thing you need to do is follow instructions. And what are those instructions? Well, basically, the guild leaders will point you out with this uh, sign right here, this is a target mark, the target mark indi indicates the terrains that your guild leaders want you to attack. If they have the target, the target mark, go after those uh, those terrains. You can just put your entire troops in there. Just select all, and then you can boost them. You can boost with 200 elixir, which is the one that I have uh, right now. Uh, 200 elixir is giving me a 70% boost on my troops, which means I have 110k uh, troops attacking. But with the 200 elixir, I'm getting uh, 77k more troops. Every terrain has is its rewards. This one gives 5k contribution and 5k common souls. This one gives 2k contribution, 3k souls. The buildings usually give other things and more uh, more prices. Uh, the best is the influence for the guild. That's what the guild leaders usually want. Influence that will uh, make your guild be able to level up and have better bonuses. I will talk about the bonuses in a second. So this terrain gives 500 influence for the guild. and. 90k gold to be distributed for every player. Now the distribution of prizes, according to all the terrains you have, will depend on the amount of troops uh, that you have spent on that uh, war, on that turf war. Every war is divided by 24 hours, divided in three clashes. The first one begins at the reset hour. For me, it is at 7 o'clock p.m. That's when my reset uh, starts, and that's when the first clash starts as well. The first, uh, at the end of the first clash, you, not, you will not win the guild rewards. Only by the end of the third clash, only by the end of the 24 hour period, you will win the rewards from the terrains that you are currently maintaining. For instance, by the end of 24 hours, by the end of the, uh, of the third clash, which is this one that is going to occur, occur in 2 hours and 47 minutes, if, if my guild has this 2, 4, 5 terrains, uh, this, all of these rewards will be summed up and divided by the guild members. Now guys, I see a lot of new players do this mistake. Do not go around in the first or second clash, in the first part of the resets, in the second part, winning every terrain that you can, because you will not be able to keep it by the third clash. You cannot just go around and spread yourself through all the terrains that you can win and maintain, maintain them till the end of the third clash. If you win the max amount of terrains that you can in the first and second clash, the only thing that is going to happen is in the third clash you're going to lose all of those terrains back because you do not have enough troops to defend those terrains. If it is the first clash, you cannot just go around and win every uh, spread out terrain that you can have access to. In the first class, you usually have access to four terrains to enter the, the turf war. One is on top, one is on the bottom, and the other two on the, are on the sides. You shouldn't... There's a lot of people that ju just go around and try to win all of those four terrains right from the start. And what happens then? Then you are spread out through all the map and there's nothing you can do to defend all the terrains. And you want to gain the terrains that are on the side of the terrains you first entered. But since you entered in four different terrains all over the map, now you cannot uh, spread quite easily or efficiently because your leaders will tell you to spread out from a certain terrain and what usually new players do is gain all the terrains that are on the side of the initial terrains that you won that are all spread around the map so you are winning way too many terrains spread out and by the third clash you will not be able to defend any of those terrains and you will lose them all because you already spent all of your troops. Usually if you are starting out just listen, uh, just see where are the marked terrains, where are the bullseyes at. That's when you want to have put all of your troops right away. If you have a mark at the start, just put all your troops right away there because you don't really know what to do. Uh, usually the best thing it, that is is to wait for the last clash and then snipe the other the other guild's terrain with your troops, but you don't really have that many troops at the start and your troop count will not uh, be that helpful to the guild itself. So the best thing that you can do at the start is just put all your troops in the terrain that is marked by the guild uh, by the guild leaders and just put all your troops there and if you have elixir to spend very well use some elixir 200 days not a big deal if not don't don't spend it because you don't have it just put all your troops there never ever attack a terrain that has a white flag 
And if your guild members don't, are not usually active on the guild, if you don't put the marked target, then just try to find another guild. Uh, you need to be careful, you can not uh, jump around every guild uh, every day, you cannot get out of a guild and then enter another and then get out and enter another because you will have penalties. Uh, usually if you skip, uh, if you go jumping from guild to guild, you will have a penalty of, I think now it is 6 days or 5 days, that you will not be able to enter a, a turf war. You will not be able to send heroes to turf wars, which means you will not be able to do your daily quests because of it. So be careful, do not jump around uh, through, uh, from guild to guild very often. If you enter your first guild, you do what you have to do, you go for marked targets. If there is no marked targets because the guild members don't really, uh, the guild leaders don't really care about that, just stick around a, a while and then find another guild. Negotiate with uh, other people if you want, if not, uh, just remain on that guild then. If you don't want to bother that much with the guild wars because all you want to do is the daily quest, then fuck that, don't, don't mind that. And when you are mar more acquainted with the game and you have a, more, uh, a bigger troop count, then you can bother negotiating with the uh, top guilds to go to those guilds. Otherwise, don't really bother, just do the daily quests and win as many as much contribution as you can because you need them for uh, the certain event steps. The distribution will depend, as I said, on the amount of troops that you spent on that 24-hour war. And the first place, the, the, the player that, would, that contributed with the most amount of troops for the 24-hour war for the three clashes, gets the first place and 7% of all the combined rewards. The second place gets 6% of those rewards, the third place 5%, blah 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 blah. Uh, right here, which is what I usually gain, is 2% because I'm usually between the 12th place and the 26th place. place. And that is most likely what you will be expecting to win in most leagues, unless you are a pretty old player or a whale basically that already has a lot of, a lot of troops. This is, uh, depending on your guild, this is usually for the player who has 200k troops or 150k troops, depending on the guild. If you are looking for a tier 2 guild, you will be needing, you will need to have 300k troops to be winning the first place, and even then it's going to be difficult. Uh, if you are looking for a tier 1 type of guild, which is which are the best uh, guilds, you'll be looking to have 800k troops to win the first place, or 700k troops. So don't uh, don't beat yourself up if you do not win the first place or the second place. That does not matter uh, that much. What does matter is helping your guild to win the most uh, terrains that is possible, and that includes alliances. Some uh, guild leaders make alliances with other guild uh, with other guilds that are on the terrain, and that's why it is very important to follow the marked targets to attack and the flags, the white flags, which are used to say that you should not attack that terrain. Every war uh, takes 24 hours to finish, uh, every war is divided in three clashes uh, between those 24 hours, which is 8 hours every clash, and by the end of the 18th clash, the turf war ends and a new one starts. If you have made enough points for your guild, your guild might go, might go up in tiers and be facing tougher guilds on those wars, or it might go down if you haven't win one that many terrains and go to an easier tier. Now, the contribution. Why do you want to win contribution? What do you do with contribution? With contribution, you want to win as, mass, uh, as most contribution as possible. The better the guild you are, the more contribution it will uh, you will gain because it is a, you are in a better tier, in a more difficult tier, so you win more contribution and the other stuff like souls and gold. So, and with contribution, you can spend on bonuses that you can win, uh, that you can use on the game itself. Guild bonuses, in, it's not just for guild wars or just to use on guilds, you can actually use on your warlord and on your heroes to play other types of games within the mighty party. For instance, this one gives you 60% more gold for victories in battle. That means that in the fight, in the Hall of Fame, you will gain 60% more gold by winning a fight. With this one, you will have more attack to your order heroes, so basically you need to spend 620 contributions to have the 9 plus attack to your order heroes for one day or 2.7k for seven days. But there is one thing you need to keep in mind you cannot spend your contribution blindly. You, oh, yeah, I have 3k, I'm going to use this to go up in leagues faster. You need to keep in mind that you have to have contribution stored up uh, for when events come because you need contribution to pass on certain event nodes. So do not spend all your contribution uh, blindly. As you can see, I'm not spending any of my contribution right now. Uh, I have 15k and still I'm not spending anything. 
uh, usually players buy this uh, for 7 days the 60% or the chest opening faster uh, for 7 days when there are events uh, going on because you can open the chest faster and gain sparks faster with this and we usually uh, pay for 7 days because it is required on the weekly quest to usually uh, activate the guild boost for 7 days and so we choose either this one for more gold, if we are grinding gold, I go with this one for 7 days, or if I'm grinding events, I go with chest opening 7 days uh, for 22% faster. Now, your uh, guild bonus will not be the same as mine, this gives me 60%, but it will depend on the guild that you are. If you are on a lower tier guild, uh, usually you won't have the level 7 bonus, this is a level 7, so uh, your guild might have a level 3 or a level 2 or a level 4, which will give you the last percentage of bonus. That includes, that is, that goes with every bonus, that is, uh, the more level ups the guild has, the bigger the level of the, the guild, and the more bonuses it can upgrade. So that's why you want contribution, you need contribution for events, and you want the contribution to have certain bonuses. If you are a, a whale, if you consider yourself a whale, this is very good for you. If you spend a lot of, uh, of money in the game, you can just go and come here to the rankings, and you can speak to the top guilds because the top guilds usually take whales in them. As you can see, bonus 9, whales only. This one only takes whales. Friendship, whale guild. Uh, you can just send a message to, one, uh, to any of these uh, guilds and say that you are a whale, that you intend on spending a lot of money on the game, and they will let you, and they will let you in the guild because that will be good for them. Because with the more money you spend on a guild, the, mem the members spending uh, money gives uh, influence to the guild which makes the guild be able to level up more and that's why they want whales and that's why it is easier for you if you are a whale to get in a, a guild if you are a free-to-play player well you just have to basically have patience uh, evolve your heroes have more troop counts because the only way that top tier guilds will accept you is either if you spend a lot of money on the game or if you have a high troop count on, on your account Usually the best guilds will accept you if you have at least 150k troops or 200k troops, so that takes a lot of time to, to go to a tier 1 level uh, guild. Right now I have 93k troops and I'm on a tier 2 uh, guild, usually a tier 2 guild will accept you if you have at least 50k troops, so you can go to a tier 2 guild for that. The best thing of being in a good guild is the evolve uh, bonus because it will decrease your cost uh, of evolving heroes from epic to legendaries or from rare to legendaries by 25% depending on the level of the bonus you have. This is the level 7, it will give you 25% less uh, cost on evolving a hero. So thank you very much for watching, hopefully you'll find this information really useful and don't forget to smash that like button and please subscribe. Ah!